Welcome to Learn This Game, where you can learn about board games and how they are played. Today, we'll be looking at Skip Bow. In this video, there'll be an overview and description of the game. We'll inventory the components and we'll review the rules. We'll go through gameplay including setup, sample turns, and victory conditions. Finally, we'll look at some accessories that may enhance your gaming experience. In the description, there'll be some helpful links and a timestamp index. If you would like to skip the introduction and go straight to the setup and playthrough, go to the description and click on the timestamp now. If you find this video helpful, please like, subscribe, and share. And don't forget to leave a comment on which game you'd like to see reviewed on Learn This Game. Skip Bow was published by Mattel Games and was designed by Hazel Skip Bowman. In this multiplayer card game, you're trying to be the first player to play all the cards in your stockpile. The game is recommended for ages 7 and older and is considered to be of low complexity. It will take 20 to 45 minutes to play a game depending on the number of players. Skip Bow is designed for 2 to 6 players, and it is a competitive game since you will be attempting to defeat your opponents. There are also rules for competitive team play. An app is not required to play and there is no app assistance. However, you can purchase standalone apps from Apple and Google, so you can play Skipbo without the physical game. The links will be in the description. There are no expansions for Skipbo, but there are several related games including Skipbo Jr., the Skipbo Tin Can Edition, and a Roll and Write version. If you like Skipbo, you may also like these other multiplayer card games. You can perform an internet search with the keywords Family Card Games, Strategy Card Games, and Multiplayer Card Games. Now that you've seen a brief description of the game, let's get into the game itself. Skipbo is a card game that does not use dice or a board. There is no theme. The cards are based on the numbers 1 through 12 with some wild cards. Now let's see what it takes to win. You win by being the first player to get rid of all the cards in your face down card stack, known as your stockpile. Skip Bow is a sequencing card game, which means you'll be building stacks of cards in numerical order from 1 to 12. You also have the option of playing multiple games. The first player to score 500 points wins. The winner of each game wins 25 points for the game and 5 points for each card remaining in the stockpiles of all opponents. Now let's look at the components. Skip Bow comes with a single, double-sided rule sheet and 162 cards. There are 12 sets of 12 cards each, plus 18 wild cards which can be assigned any value during play. The colors do not affect the gameplay or victory conditions. However, they are visual cues to where you are in completing the sequencing, so when you start to see red cards in a building pile, you know you are close to completing that particular building pile. The blank cards are not used, however, if you lose or damage one of the game cards, you can write that number on a blank card and use it as a substitute, so you don't have to throw out the entire game and buy a new copy. Now let's look at the rules. The double-sided rule sheet is easy to understand and follow, and it will cover the following topics. How to set up the game, how to win, where to lay out the piles in the play area, steps during gameplay, how to score multiple games, how to play in teams, and how to play a shorter version of the game. Now we're going to set up the game for two players. The two players will sit across from each other. Each player will have a total of five piles in front of them for their use only. One will be the stock card pile. These are the cards that you're trying to get rid of to win the game. The other four will be discard piles that only that player can use. The discard piles will be initially empty until cards are placed there after the start of the game. There will also be five piles in the middle of the play area, one for the draw deck and four piles to build the sequential stacks of cards. Both players will use the center piles. The building piles will be empty initially, just like the player's discard piles. In a two-player game, each player is dealt 30 cards to their stockpile. 
shuffle the deck and place these face down on the respective stockpiles of each player. Each player turns over the top card of their stockpile and leaves it face up. Place the remaining cards face down in the middle. This will be the draw pile. The game has now been set up for two players. Now let's see how the game is played. The youngest player goes first. In this case, let's say it's player one. The first player draws five cards from the draw pile. At the beginning of every turn, you will draw back up to five. You do not show your hand to your opponent. Your goal now is to add to the middle building piles with cards from your hand, discard piles, and stockpile. You are going to play as many cards as you can before you have to end your turn. Your turn ends when you cannot play any more cards to the building piles. To add to the building piles, you must first play a card with a value of 1. Then cards are played in order from 2 to 12. Always keep in mind that your priority should be to use cards from your stockpile. If you play all 5 cards from your hand in a turn, draw 5 more cards from the draw deck immediately and continue playing your turn. You can continue to do this if you use all 5 cards. However, discarding your 5th card to one of the discard piles does not count as playing all 5 of your cards in one turn. When you have played all of the cards that you can, end your turn by moving one card from your hand to any of your four discard piles. So player one can start a building pile by playing the one card from their hand. Since player one does not have another one card to start a building pile, or a two card to add to the first building pile, player one needs to end their turn by discarding a card to a discard pile. It is now player two's turn. Player 2 then draws 5 cards from the draw pile in the middle row. Player 2 can place the 2 and the 3 cards on top of the 1 card in the first building pile. Since player 2 does not have a 1 to start a new building pile and cannot add any more cards, they discard a card from their hand to one of their discard piles. It is now player 1's turn. Player 1 draws the hand back to 5 cards. Player 1 will now review the cards in their hand, their discard piles, and their stockpile to see what cards can be played onto the building piles. You can only play the top cards of your discard piles if there is an available space on a building pile. And recall that building piles must be built sequentially from 1 to 12. And there cannot be more than 4 discard piles per player, and no more than 4 building piles in total. Player 1 first looks at their stockpile since those are the cards that must be exhausted in order to win. Player 1 is able to play the 4 card onto the building pile with a 3 card. The next card on the stockpile is then turned over. Player 1 can then play the 5 card from their discard pile onto the 4 card in the building pile. Player 1 looks at their hand and can play a 1 card onto a building pile to start a new sequence. Player 1 also has an orange skip a wild card and wild cards can have any value from 1 to 12. Player 1 decides to play the wild card as a 1 value to start a new building pile. Since player 1 cannot add any more cards to the building piles, they play the 8 card onto one of their discard piles. Now player 2 draws their hand to 5 cards. Player 2 then looks at their stockpile, discard piles, and hand. Player 2 sees an opportunity to play a card from their stockpile, but first they have to play the 6 card from one of their discard piles. Then the 7 card from the stockpile can be played onto the building pile and the next stockpile card is revealed. Player 2 can then play the 2 card onto either of the building piles with a 1 value. The wild card can be played as a 3 card, which then allows the 4 card to also be played. Player 2 cannot play any more cards to the building piles, so places the 10 card on one of their discard piles. This marks the end of the turn. If Player 2 had been able to play all 5 cards from their hand, they would have drawn another 5 cards from the draw pile and continued playing. It is now Player 1's turn. Player 1 draws the hand back to 5 cards. And thus play will continue until one player has exhausted their stockpile. When a building pile eventually reaches the 12th card, that building pile is removed from the center of the play area and placed in a discard pile next to the draw deck. If the draw deck is exhausted, the discarded cards are then reshuffled and act as the new draw deck.
Just remember to focus foremost on your stockpile, since being the first player to play all of those cards will allow you to win the game. You do not gain anything by building the most building piles or playing the most discarded cards. You should only be concerned with using those cards to help you dispose of your stockpile cards. Now let's look at some accessories that go well with Skippo. If you are playing on a padded card table, you should be able to easily place and pick up cards. However, if you are playing on a dining room or coffee table, you may want to invest in a game mat. They are relatively inexpensive but make card play much easier. And of course, you can use the mats for other card games and games that use tiles or dominoes. You may also want to make a small investment in a card storage solution. The original insert does not conveniently store the cards, which have to be broken down into three decks to put back into the box. The cards also tend to slide around, which could risk damaging the cards. You can purchase a simple plastic card storage box to store and protect your cards. Just remember that there are 162 cards, so make sure you buy a card box large enough for all of them. This concludes this presentation of Skipbo. Visit us at these sites and don't forget to let us know in the comments if you enjoyed this game and what games you would like to see reviewed in the future. And if you would like to experience something that will give more meaning and excitement to your life, stick around for our disclaimer. Coming up next. <laughs>